This video shows you the structure and dicer decomposition of a 24 kb intron from human that has 25 dicer segments in it. This particular image, very much like the ones you've seen before, uh, has uh, two base pair stems, whereas this uh, structure here has only five base pair uh, stems. The, um, this is the pruning structure. You've seen this before now. It's uh, really quite complex, uh, as you can imagine. Um, but this is the main point of this uh, video, which is the dicer decomposition uh, graphic. Uh, this uh, graphic shows how a single sequence uh, will we'll pick on here and then zoom up and uh, show you um, the various levels of the tree. Uh, so um, this is the first, uh, this is the complete sequence here. And then when the dicer acts, since there are 25 uh, dicer segments, it cuts the molecule into 75, that is 25 times three uh, different fragments. So there are 75 fragments indicated around this uh, circle. Now those uh, 75 fragments, most of them go to become uh, refolded again, but some of them uh, don't. And so you can see that there are there are uniform uh, pickups of fragments here, but for example here there are two fragments that are either too short or don't have um, a dicer um, uh, stem in them. Uh, and so uh, those that don't have any yellow lines pr em being emitted from them. So that's, uh, this is level one, this is level two, this is level three. Now if we put in level four, you see that the process is expanded. And by this time we're doing about a thousand different refoldings of the various fragments that Dicer has created. The way the algorithm works is that once a sequence uh, fragment has been identified for decomposition, then if it turns up again in the process uh, from other decompositional pathways, then it's not not uh, repeated. And so every decomposition is, 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 is uh, completely decomposed only once. Um, and so you see that at level four, the number of uh, folds have expanded, but at level five, it's expanded even more. And at level six, yet more. Okay, and of course now you begin to see uh, dropouts in the process as we um, uh, go to a larger and larger um, number of uh, refolds. But at level seven, the process begins to converge. And so if we cut out two, three, four, five, and even six, what you see is that at level seven, there are huge uh, gaps here where these fragments have already been seen and there's no reason to uh, re-decompose uh, them. Whereas uh, uh, these ones here are quite dense and have been decomposed, but yield very few uh, results. Now, uh, th th uh, fragments that need further to be decomposed and have not been seen before. Level eight is just a little bit and level nine is just a bit again. So now if we put back the whole tree like this, uh, then uh, what we have is the uh, complete um, um, mm, decompositional process. I just have to move, move it up a bit like that. Okay, so now if we ask the question, well, which uh, fragments uh, come about as a result of action at level uh, two? So we'll put on the sequence, which is uh, down here, okay? And we'll ask the question, well, what fragments uh, that are between 20 bases and uh, 1,000 bases are seen, are generated from level two? And the answer is just these few. And now if we put on level three of the tree and put its fragments on, take off two, you see that level three has this number of fragments and that the fragments are only being generated in certain places around the sequence. And this will hold true all the way through. So here's level four taking off three. So here are the fragments, many, many more fragments come from level four because more work is being done. Uh, and then level five is the same thing. Here are the fragments from level five. You see there are many fragments in this region here that come from level five. Um, level six is, is here. And uh, so these are the fragments that come from level six. And level seven, uh, here are the ones that come from seven. There's only a few. Uh, here's level eight, 
um, and there's only a few from there. And level nine, there's even there's only just one. Okay. So what we see is is that uh, many of the fragments uh, come from levels four, five, and six. Just a few from three and two. Uh, some from seven and very few from eight and nine. Okay. So this is the the decomposition of this original sequence up here. Um, let me see if I can get it to move the way I want it to. Uh, there. And um, and uh, what you notice is that only certain portions of the sequence have uh, fragments associated with them. Um, and that's uh, that's very interesting and very important. Now, um, what we'll do is we'll pick on uh, some particular place here and then zoom up on, on it. And what you see is that there are some fragments that are produced by many different pathways of the, of the di various dicer decompositions and that uh, these points have many different green lines coming into them but only one sequence that's generated by that. Many of them have the same end point and some have the same begin point. And, uh, but of course then there are in with a given region there may be things that are just slightly different from each other and some that are the same. If we go back and look at um, other places in the decomposition, uh, let's say over here, and zoom up on it, uh, what you see here is that, uh, once again, there are places where there are many uh, uh, pathways to get the same fragment uh, here, particularly here. And then there are some that have the same endpoints, some that have slightly different endpoints, and some that have the same begin points, and others that have different end po begin points. So this process of um, decomposing a sequence into its uh, dicer uh, fragments is uh, very interesting and very and potentially very important. Um, the importance is that um, that the the reason why the dicer stems form is because there are these highly repeated sequences. The highly repeated sequences constitute about 50% of the human genome. And that 50% is uh, distributed throughout the whole genome, um, but particularly in introns. Now, exons are always very short, and so there's not very much of a chance to have dicer segments made from them or to have them be uh, involved in dicer clipping. Um, but the introns, which have no sequence constraints on them other than at the boundaries, uh, have lots of dicer uh, uh, stems in them. So in the human genome, there are 641,000 um, uh, introns, and about 28% of them have uh, dicer segments uh, to them. The dicer segments uh, decompose as we see here and there's another file that video that follows that shows a number of other dicer decompositions um, but the the point is that uh, when uh, these dicer uh, decompositions occur only portions of the sequence uh, produce the fragments and other portions or the large portions of the sequence don't and that's something that uh, wasn't known uh, before and uh, may be potentially very important. Uh, I would argue that these uh, small fragments that are produced by the dicer decomposition are exactly the RNAs that you need for interference RNAs, for connectrons, for all the other types of RNAs that people are beginning to find. And of course, you can't have the complete intron because that's a big object. Uh, whereas if you break up the intron into little fragments, then those fragments can go and do what they have to do. And so this is uh, one of the implications of the uh, dicer cascade. And of course, you need the, to be able to run the RNA folding program very rapidly. So this was a 24 KB intron. It takes about a minute and a half to uh, f uh, decompose the longest uh, sequence. But as you go down in the cascade here, um, here like this, well then uh, these uh, things happen much more rapidly. But there's still, there are thousands of them that have to be done. 
and this is uh, true even for 24 KB. So uh, the importance of the R fast RNA package, I'll stop.